Hey guys and welcome back to a new video about performance and baseline profiles in Android. In the last video, in case you haven't watched that, definitely check it out here. You learned how you can measure the um, performance of your app, specifically in regards to macro benchmarks. So we measured how fast our app is when it launches, so how long it needs for that. And we measured the scrolling and navigation performance. So how long or rather how many frames are dropped when the user is actually on a critical user journey. But before we start with this video one more thing it is almost black friday again and here at pl coding it's black week so starting from today until the end of next week you will get 25 percent off of all my premium courses so if you say you like my videos on youtube and you learned a lot then you will definitely learn even more with my premium courses so until the end of next week you can get 25 percent off of all my courses using the discount code black so in these courses i really go much more into detail than i can do here on youtube so you will really learn architecture for bigger apps. You will be prepared for, for an actual job. You will learn how you can automate things using CI pipelines and much, much more. So definitely do check these out in the first link of this video's description. However, just knowing how fast or how slow your app is, of course, not enough. If you know it's too slow, then you also want to be able to do something and optimize that performance. And that is what I will show you in this video. And to understand how this performance optimization works, we first of all need to understand a little bit how Android apps and libraries specifically are compiled. So these libraries that we include in our Android app are usually compiled in JIT mode. So JIT stands for just in time. And that means that yeah, these parts are compiled on the fly basically when they are needed. However, what we can now do with baseline profiles is we can specify, we can create these baseline profiles, which are in the end just simple text files to, um, to optimize performance for critical user journeys. So in our case, uh, for the user journey that the user clicks the button to scroll down, click on an item, get to the detail screen. And that is our user journey here. And in the baseline profile, which is in the end really just a text file, we specify that's basically just a list of functions and uh, classes which are already pre-compiled. So we can kind of specify these or generate this file to tell our app that it can access these um, pre-compiled classes, which is of course faster than needing to compile these on the fly. And you can't only do this for your whole app, you can also do this if you have a library, for example. So you can kind of pre-generate a baseline profile for your library, which is for example already done for Jetpack Compose, which kind of ships as a library, um, which is of course important because so many apps are using Jetpack Compose, so the Android team better make sure that it is performant on all kinds of devices. But here in this example, we will just make sure to generate a baseline profile for our app, for our little sample app, and then I will show you what kind of performance benefit that uh, this actually has on our actual app. So I am here in the Android Studio project I set up in the last video. In case you haven't watched that and you don't care about watching that, you can also find the code for this initial state here for this video in this video's description, of course. So what we will now do and what we'll start with is we will create another kind of Android unit test or Android, yeah, it's not a unit test, it's rather a UI test um, or benchmark test kind of thing in our benchmark module. So we open the source directory, go into Java, and here we are where we have our example startup benchmark. We want to create a new file. And this file will be called, let's call it um, baseline profile generator. So in the end, we will just have a test and that will generate our baseline profile. So just that text file with a list of classes and functions which um, are already pre-compiled and which are faster to access. Select class here, also add this run with annotation to this class. And then in here, we can specify a baseline rule. And that is called baseline profile rule, which also just gives us access to this functionality that generates our baseline profile. We also need to press Alt Enter here to add this experimental annotation to our class and then annotate this with uh, add get rule, just as usual for JUnit rules. And generating such a baseline profile is really not different from what we did in the last video here to measure our app's performance. So just this kind of function will differ for measuring uh, the um, performance in this case or to generate a baseline profile. Uh, but we also get this macro benchmark scope and we need to do, yeah, just tell our app what it should do and for which actions it should actually, or based on which actions it should generate that baseline profile. So in here we can say, we have a test 
and the test is called generate baseline profile. And we can set that equal to baseline rule dot collect baseline profile. The package name is the same as we specified in our other file. Oops, um, so we can just copy this over. And then here in this block of code, we just get access to our macro benchmark scope. And here we just want to put the same code as we did in our uh, um, startup benchmark. So we press home, we then start our activity and wait. And after that, we say add elements and scroll down. So we just do the same thing and generate this text file, which optimizes our app's performance based on these actions we specified here in this function. And now the thing or the difference for generating a baseline profile compared to running a benchmark test is the device it should run on. So a benchmark test should obviously run on a real device because that's the closest to the conditions your actual users will have. However, to generate a baseline profile, we actually need a rooted device for these performance metrics and to collect all this information. And for generating that, it's totally fine to do that on an emulator, which is already rooted or which you can set up in a way that it is, that it is rooted. And for that, we can go to our built at Gradle of our benchmark module and here we can specify some test options. So we can say test options. And in here we say managed devices. In there we say devices again. And we can now set up a device here, which our baseline profile generator will use to ge generate the profile. Now we'll use the same device here that um, Google also used in their code labs, um, but you can also set up different devices here. I will just use a Pixel 2 device, APR level 31, and then we can say managed virtual device. And we might actually need to add an import. Let me quickly copy that over. Just scroll up and also simply specify that import com Android build API DSL managed virtual device. And then it will also know this here. And then this block here, we can now configure our device. The name of our device is pixel two. Then our API level is in this case 31 and the system image source this is important is AOSP so this is the kind of image source for the, you know, the, the the system image source for devices that are rooted so with this we make sure that we have a rooted device so we can generate baseline profiles based on that when that is done we can click synchronize now to synchronize our gradle files and the next thing is uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up kind of a gradle task that will use this device that we just set up to generate our baseline profile. And we could just use our Gradle command, so in the terminal, but that's quite a long command. So I'd like to actually set up a task that we can easily um, kind of yeah, just trigger with a single click. And for that, we can go to here, in this case, scroll and navigate or whatever is next to your emulator selection, click edit configurations. Mm -hmm. Here we want to click on this little plus to add a new configuration and you run configuration and we want to select Gradle. And then here we can simply enter a Gradle task that we want to execute. And I will paste a long string here. I will put that in this video's description as well. Um, so you can copy it. But in the end, you can see that is what it says. We run our benchmark Pixel 2 API, benchmark Android test a task which will be there in Gradle. And this will yeah, just run our benchmark Android test on this specific pixel device. Then we specify some parameters and we also specify the class that we actually run, uh, want to run on this device. So that's just the test class. You can see this is my baseline profile generator in my package. Of course, you need to adjust the package name here to whatever you chose. But if you've done that, we can click OK. And then we have a long task name. We could also rename this, um, but it doesn't matter here, um, which we can then run. So let's see what happens. Hopefully everything goes well here if we run this. I wouldn't be surprised if Gradle actually throws some kind of issues here, but let's see. And that is done after 52 seconds. So that takes a little moment, of course. And the build was successful. That looks quite good. And where do we now get the generated baseline profile? Well, we can minimize that first of all. Go to our benchmark build directory, open this, and here we get the, I think it's outputs, and here we have connected, no, it's, yeah, connected Android test additional output, this directory. Here, no, there is no, that's the wrong directory, I think. Is it this one? Yes, here, and sorry, in manage device Android test additional output. 
Here we have our Pixel 2 API 31, and this is our baseline profile, which has baseline prof.txt. To use this baseline profile, this was just generated now, we need to copy this and paste it in our main direction, our main source set of our app module. So we paste this here and important is that we rename it to baseline-prof so that our app actually knows that it should use that. And here, that's the baseline profile. You can see it's just a list of functions and classes that are now already pre-compiled and our app can make use of. Now we have our baseline profile, but how do we really now know what kind of performance gain we get out of that? And for that, we need to go back to our performance benchmarks from the last video and adjust these a little bit to test that. So here in our example startup benchmark, we want to go up here. We first of all want to remove the tests here. So just the annotations. And we want to pass an additional parameter. And that parameter is the so-called compilation mode. With this compilation mode, we can define how our app should be compiled. So whether we want to use baseline profiles or not. And here for this scroll and navigate as well. And we need to make sure that we use this compilation mode here in our parameters. So compilation mode is mode. And for this one as well, like this. And then we of course need to specify some tests that we would like to run. So test function startup for compilation mode none, which is, yeah, well, that just means that nothing is actually pre-compiled. So um, that is the, the worst case performance kind of if we weren't going to use baseline profiles. And we can say simply startup and we run that with compilation mode dot none like this. We can then copy this and also of course include a test for the compilation mode partial which refers to using baseline profiles. So this test should actually now perform better if we also swap this out here with partial than this test. Now we will actually get two results of two different tests and we also want to copy these two tests and do the same for our scroll performance. So scroll compilation mode and scroll compilation mode like this. And this will obviously run scroll and navigate this as well. Scroll and navigate. And now we have four tests that actually measure our performance before using baseline profiles and after using baseline profiles. So I'm actually excited what will happen here. We now need to make sure that we go back to our um, Pixel 6 device or my Pixel 6. It's important that you use your real device here again since it's a performance test and need to connect that and I'll, just, I'll see you back when I run it. So there we go, my device is connected. Let's run this test case again. Actually, we want to click here, run and there we go. Let's take a look here in Visor, how that will look like, but that will now take a little while because um, yeah, each test will probably take like a minute or so. But the cool thing is now uh, and the cool thing about these things being tests that you can also easily automate this in your CI pipeline, your continuous integration pipeline um, to essentially be able to measure your app's performance over a period of time. And that's when it really gets interesting because then you will see, okay, my, my app actually gets faster over time or gets slower over time. So you can really use this to recognize trends where, you, where your app is going and then optimize based on that. And you can already see a lot is happening here. The first test already succeeded. We get startup compilation mode partial, but yeah, let's just take a look at the result when all the tests are done. Obviously the scroll tests take longer than simply booting up our app and then doing that again, but I'll see you back after that. And there we go, all of our tests actually succeeded and that is looking good. And if we now click on the top test results tab and scroll down, we get our results. And here we have our startup compilation mode partial. We get our values for that. And we need to compare that, of course, to the compilation mode none. So that is what we expect to be worse since there was no pre-compilation at all. And if we take a look at the median value here for no pre-compilation or no baseline profiles, we got an amount of 186 milliseconds. If we scroll up to partial, that is a lot, well, not a lot better. It's a little bit better. But of course, the more complex your app is, the more the difference or the, the bigger the difference will be here. Um, but we have a very simple app here with not a lot of uh, things that are done when our app launches and on that user journey. But we still do see a difference here. 
And if we take a look at the other two benchmarks that measured our frame performance, these two, for compilation mode none, if we for example compare the um, like the frames in the um, larger percentiles, then the time it took to process that frame on the CPU is a lot lower here. Um, so for this P50, it didn't make a big difference here, but for these um, frames that were actually kind of outliers, it made a huge difference. So um, having a 20 millisecond difference for a single frame is actually quite a big, quite a big advantage, uh, quite a big yeah, difference. And if we take a look at frame overrun milliseconds, as I said, it's better when these values are lower. Here for P50, we have a little bit lower value. For P90, it's already a two millisecond difference. Here we have, yeah, here for P95, it's actually a, a large difference, like 12 milliseconds. And here even larger, so almost 25 milliseconds difference. So we do see a performance gain here in using baseline profiles. And of course, yeah, for your app, you need to think about what is the critical user journey? Um, what does, what do most users do when they launch your app? And then you set up a baseline profile for exactly that kind of user journey. And then that will have the biggest performance impact on your app. So I hope you enjoyed this and you learned a lot about this. If so, then you will definitely also learn a lot in my premium courses. Again, there is a Black Friday sale going on. You get 25% off on all my courses with a discount code BLACK. Simply apply that in cart. You will find the link down below. Click it, check it out. And I'll wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.